Hey, good morning. It's the day after second Christmas day. I hope you all had a great Christmas and could spend it with the ones you love. And if not, well, we wish you all the best, of course. So today, a very special day because today is the Christmas concert of Vibi Suryadi. And well, for the last few years, I've been doing all the photography for him. So also during his Christmas concerts. So I'm gonna take you today behind the closed doors and to be honest, some parts I'm going to show you is normally really behind closed doors. So join us for today's episode, the Christmas concert from Bibi Soyari. Okay, driving in Amsterdam, almost at the concertgebouw for the concert. Okay, almost there you can already see the concertgebouw, so now we have to find parking. And in Amsterdam, <laughs> that's a challenge. Okay, waiting for the gates to open. We're gonna go backstage, so we're gonna take you with us. Okay, if you listen very closely, you can already hear Vibi playing. So, let's go. Some final adjustments before the concert, and this is Mr. the Piano Tuner. Hello. Hello. <laughs> From Eat My Pianos. Okay. Cool. Okay, we're using two cameras tonight, two A7R2s, one with the 24 to 70 and one with the 12 to 24 for wide angles. Now this is something we always have to sign, but this part is gone because I can shoot the whole concert. Okay, I will be sitting in front and that means that I first have to introduce myself of course to the people behind me so they know what I'm doing and it's always nice that you don't have to move around a lot of course but that people know what you're doing so they don't get angry. Okay, so this will be my spot so I can move around a little bit and that's why I have to introduce myself to the people sitting on those chairs so they know that I'm actually legit and I'm not somebody just moving around. I won't move around a lot of course during the concert, but I will be moving around, so I have to make sure that the people know that I'm there and why I'm here. And it's just polite. And our posters. Ok, 
Okay, ready for the second part. Oké, okay, the end of the concert, een empty concertgebouw. Let's go home. And on our way to Emma Ward. Now it's the day after the concert. We came home at around one o'clock this morning. And this is one of the first episodes that will actually spend two days because I also want to show you guys the workflow for retouching these images. So join us in today's episode of Behind the Closed Doors, which is actually the same as the one you were watching before. Up to no shot. Yeah. Now this is the poster that we have outside and one of the most important things for me is that you actually see who's running the business. In a lot of businesses today you don't see this anymore and people really like to see the face behind so that's why we use these images on the posters. Cool to come into the store and actually get this from our intern. She made it over Christmas, really cool gift. Now yesterday we used two A7R2's from Sony, one with the 1224 and one with the 24 to 70. Now one of the things I absolutely love about these cameras is the silent mode. You can set it in the menu and it's really absolutely silent. I'm gonna show you that now. Okay, this one is still set up from last night, so listen to the sound of, well actually no sound. And yes, that's it. It's now making pictures. The noise you hear in the background, by the way, is the computer tower starting up. There's absolutely no sound. And that's what makes these cameras incredibly interesting for live concerts or shooting on movie sets. Because you don't need a blimp, that's a case that will actually block the sound, but the camera itself is 100% silent. Now having that total silence in your camera is incredibly important because as you saw yesterday I'm sitting really really close to the artist and that means especially with classical music if you have a camera that goes off like tick, 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 that's very very irritating for the artist but also for the people who are sitting there remember they paid for those tickets so they want a great concert that's also one of the reasons, by the way, why a lot of photographers are only allowed to shoot the first two numbers or three numbers or during the end. 
and during the end, with all due respect, VB is already tired, he's sweating, and those aren't the best images. Although I really like those images because those really show you emotion. But the artist itself, in this case VB, actually prefers the images when he's still very, very fresh, so during the first few songs. Now, another thing that's very important, make sure that your search light is off. Now, what is the search light? That's your focus assist beam. And that can be also incredibly frustrating for the artist, because you will constantly see a light coming off from a camera. So you can also disconnect that on the Sony, and I think that's incredibly handy, because they are not only very silent, there's no sound at all, but you also can adjust the focus assist beam, so in other words you can turn that off. Making it again perfect cameras for movie sets or a live concert. Now a rock concert, it wouldn't matter at all. But for classical music, it has to be really silent. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to copy all the images to a folder on an SSD drive. And then I'm going to use Capture One. Because that can really fast show me if the focus is uh, sorry if the focus is right, and after that I'm gonna import everything into Lightroom, because in Lightroom I wanna um, sling to DxO Optics and DxO Optics because these shots are pretty much high ISO. I believe the lowest is ISO 3200, and the highest is actually in the 100,000 ISO. And DxO has a really, really great noise engine. So let's start copying the files and I'll show you very quickly how the workflow goes. Now because we're going to be adding a 4K monitor from BenQ very soon, I changed my setup slightly on the desk. So I'm now going to show you how our desk looks. Okay, this is the Wacom 27 inch HD. So this is my drawing tablet where I also do the retouching. Then we have the BenQ 27 inch. And over here we have a cheaper BenQ which actually always runs Discovery or National Geographic and we stream that from our Dreambox. So that's connected to the network so I can watch from television. Now some people prefer to listen to radio during retouching. I always like to have something in the back like Discovery. So that's how everything is set up now. As soon as I want to do some retouching I will actually move this to this position and then flip it down and I can do retouching and do my critical color balancing and tinting on the BenQ. So a really cool setup. It's different from what I used before, but I like this even more because in the past I had my Wacom actually in front of the BenQ and I didn't like that at all because I had to switch over every time and I couldn't use the BenQ during normal use. So this is a way better setup for me. Okay, so it's still copying the cards. That will take a little while. So in between it's time to do some emails and some other chores. All the images are now in Capture One and we actually shot 1200. Now that seems like a tremendous amount of images and it actually is during a two hour concert. But you have to realize that a lot of the stuff that I shoot is all about his hands, the proper motion and all those things combined. So. I really have to shoot a lot of images because sometimes it's just a, a very very slight change of hand can make a difference between an image that is okay and an image that's absolutely great. So that's why we shoot a lot of images. This is also why I use Capture One to go through them really fast and I'm going to show you why. If you go to the top menu of Capture One you can actually go to View and then you have this little thing called a Focus Mask. And now everything that's green is actually in focus. So now I can very quickly go through my roll and I can actually see if there's an image there like this one that actually isn't in focus. And now actually when you look right you can actually see that it is in focus. And when I zoom in you can actually see it's in focus on his um, logo over here. So this one is probably okay. But this is a very very quick way to see if there are any images here that aren't perfectly in focus. And so I can remove those very very quickly and this saves a lot of time. This is also great for wedding photographers. So let me do that first and then I will be right back with you guys. Another thing that's really cool about Capture One is of course you can focus in here. But what you can also do is focus in on the film strip and actually move this around. So now I have this whole series of images and I want to see which one is the most sharp. So I will actually go to his face, to his face, to his face. 
and here and I can actually see that this one is well the less sharp so that one will be removed in a moment so this is why I use Capture One and with Lightroom it works great for the database and for retouching of course but it takes a long time to load all these images and combined with the focus overlay mask and of course this little trick that you can zoom in on the film strip makes Capture One perfect for well the really big projects and to find your stuff really fast Okay, I very quickly went through all the shots and we ended up with, let's see, 1151. And that doesn't mean that all the images are pin sharp, it means that all the images are usable. And this is actually a pretty good score because remember I put off the AV assist light and it's an incredibly, incredibly difficult situation to shoot for a camera. So heads off to Sony. Really great performance. So what we're now going to do is I'm actually going to go through the images. I have now deselected focus mask and I'm just going to give five stars to all the images that I like. As soon as I have done that I will actually select those images with the loop and very quickly see if well, which one is the most in focus and if there are images that are a little bit soft. Now do remember that with these kind of images it's not about focus all the way, it's actually about telling the story. So sometimes an image that's not 100% in focus can actually be great. So let's go through the images and let's see what we can do. I'm done selecting and we actually selected 140 and deleted some more images. I'm going to rename this as VB December 27, 2016 Selects and the other ones I'm just going to rename as well the normal name of the concert and after this we're going to import them in Lightroom and slingshot them to DxO. Now I'm in Lightroom and I selected all the select images and it's still rendering preview so it's not as fast as it used to be or as it should be. And the only thing I now have to do is actually go to file. And again, this is not an instructional video, so we're just filming this with one camera. And we'll actually go to plugin extras and then transfer to DxO optics. And that's what we're gonna do all the retouching. That's not really retouching, it's more changing shadows, highlights, and of course doing the crops and noise reduction because that's where DxO optics really shines. Now this is one of the reasons I absolutely love DxO. As you, as you can see here, there is some noise in the image and it's mostly color noise. And of course you have two sorts of noise, chroma noise and a, a luminance noise. And luminance noise isn't that bad, but the chroma noise is with all these colors. And I now have it on HQ Fast. You can also use Prime, but HQ Fast is often more than enough. So look at the magic. There we go. And the color is also corrected, so you got a really cool difference between this, which is usable, but it's a little bit noisy, and this. And the cool thing is I can do this in batch, so I just copy this setting to all the other images, and I let the computer do its work. Now, I have done my base settings, which actually always include lowering the highlights just a little bit, because he's using this light on top of his piano. And that always blows out his hands. So my standard setting for these concerts are actually highlights a little bit down, a little bit of boost to the mid um, mid tones, and of course the noise reduction. Now that I've selected all the images and synced this, now it's actually time to do image by image. And what I do is mostly crop and do some slight changes because the lighting is always different. I want to get them a little bit well, to my taste. So change a little bit more in the exposure and that's about it. And then we have to export everything back to Lightroom. Well I still needed a good stress test for the new PC and I think this pretty much does it. We're now exporting everything back to Lightroom and the speed is absolutely amazing. Now DxO Optics is never the fastest with exporting and especially when you use a lot of noise reduction and in this case even a lot of images have Prime enabled. Now look at this speed, it's 100 images already in 6 minutes 47. That's ridiculous, that's really fast. Again, if you do normal raw conversion, TXO it's much faster, but with the prime engaged and the normal noise reduction, so it's a mix between prime and normal noise reduction, this is really fast. It's 140 images, it's now at 110 in 7 minutes, so let's say it will take 10 minutes. 
uh, rough guesstimate the Mac Pro will probably do this in about 45 minutes to an hour and that's a huge improvement in speed and to be honest I didn't expect it to be this fast so that's very positive and it doesn't crash yet so yeah, it seems that Windows is really stable. We're now at 30% overclocking according to the BIOS. So if somebody actually knows a little bit more about overclocking, let me know. Uh, I prefer of course a stable system. But if somebody goes like, hey man, you can get a lot of pr um, speed increase from a simple adjustment, just let me know. We're always open for more speed. Okay, 140 images in. And just went away. In 9 minutes 40 seconds, including prime and normal noise reduction. <laughs> really cool. Okay, we're done with all the images and we uploaded them to Dropbox for VB to check. I hope you enjoyed this longer episode of Behind the Closed Doors. Now remember, this is not an instructional video. We only film this with one camera. If you really want to have the instructional video material, look at the slides that will follow now. And you will get much more in-depth and more professionally filmed stuff, of course. So thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to our channel or support us via Patreon. Thank you so very much. See you again. Bye-bye, guys.